Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video I have something that I'm really excited about. Uh, it's another video involving the $5 Windows 98 PC as you can see right here, but it's also an unofficial Windows version video. Yes, it has been a while since we've done um, an unofficial Windows video on this channel. I've been seeing a, a few comments from some of you guys saying that you wanted to see another video in this series. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. This was actually submitted to me a while ago by a viewer on on this channel you know who you are I just want to give a huge thank you to you for actually making me aware of this but today we're going to be taking a look at a, a specialized slimmed down version of Windows 3.1 that is contained entirely on one three and a half inch 1.44 megabyte floppy diskette. Yes, you heard me right. This is a version of Windows 3.1 that is contained entirely on this one single diskette. This was actually created back in the early 2000s, around the year 2004 is when this specific version came out, but it was in development you know, prior to that, obviously. And it was created by a group of people calling themselves the China DOS Union. So this actually did come out of China. Um, so without any further ado, we're just going to go ahead and put this floppy diskette into the computer. I'm going to readjust the camera and we're going to get started with taking a look at what Mini Windows 3.11 is all about. All right, so we've got the computer booting up right now, and it is booting off of the floppy diskette that is in the drive. And uh, I'm just going to show you guys uh, how this whole thing actually works. So there, there is obviously a version of MS-DOS that is kind of bundled on this CD to actually load everything before it boots right into Windows 3.1, uh, or Windows 3.11 to be specific. So it's actually using MS-DOS 7.1, and you can choose to start it with or without EMM386, which is a uh, extended memory manager for DOS. Um, it just auto-selected to start it without it. Um, and uh, so it just says right there, welcome to mini Windows, copyright China DOS Union. We're going to enable long file name support. Uh, that is their website right there. Um, you can actually go to that website address today, um, but it just actually redirects you to another page. So it just kind of goes through and uh, you know tells you what it's actually going to be loading up here. There's a lot of uh, different components bundled in here made by separate developers. And this is where it actually begins to use the uh, mini extract utility to actually extract uh, a lot of the files that are contained on the uh, floppy diskette, but are just very compressed. So it actually stores most of this in memory, as you would imagine. Uh, and this is very, very similar to, I mean, I'm sure you guys, I don't believe I've done a video of it on this channel, um, but there is a, a, a pretty popular tool that I've used a lot on this channel, and that is Hiren's Boot CD. And that CD actually contains a miniaturized version of Windows XP, and Mini Windows XP does a very similar thing in that it, it actually has some compressed files stored on the, the CD, and during the boot up process, it, it you know extracts all of that, stores it temporarily in the RAM, uh, and then once you actually shut off the computer, obviously that is going to be deleted. Um, so you guys can probably hear that the floppy drive has been working very hard this entire time, uh, you know, to extract everything. And here it is. Here is your boot screen right there. It is a uh, custom, you know, modified boot screen. It had the uh, author's names there, and it also had the actual name of the organization, which is the China DOS Union. And so now, since we've kind of uh, extracted all, all of the files and it's being stored temporarily in, in the RAM, the floppy drive is much quieter. So you can see that this is uh, right off the bat a very, very slimmed down version of Windows 3.1 and it obviously has to be because you can only store so much on a 1.44 megabyte floppy diskette. Um, so we actually only have these eight icons right here um, inside of the program manager in this programs uh, group. There is no other you know groups here. There's not a main folder. There's not a you know startup folder. Nothing like that. So there's not any additional program groups or anything like that. Uh, all of the games you know like the card games and Minesweeper uh, and all of those are not here either. So you really only have your main essential programs that you basically really need to have to, to run. Windows 3.1. So you've got things like the file manager, you have the control panel, you have a shortcut to the DOS prompt, you have a PIF editor, multi-pad, which we'll get into in a minute, that is basically a, a text editor, a clipboard, clock, and calculator. And if we go up here to the uh, menu bar and select help, we can actually go to about program manager, and you can see right here is where it actually identifies itself as Microsoft Windows for Workgroups version 3.11. So yes, this is based off of uh, Windows for Workgroups. 
um, copyright 85 to 93. And here are uh, you know the authors' names right here: China Das Union, 2002 to 2003. So this was most likely in development in this in these years. But uh, the information I was able to find online stated that this uh, floppy disk image was released in the year 2004. So I'm sure that uh, most of you guys out there have probably used Windows 3.1 at some point, whether that be in a, a virtual machine or on a real computer if you actually used it back when it came out in the early 90s. So even still, I'm just going to kind of go through here and show you all of these programs. So we're going to start with the file manager. Uh, the file manager is obviously the tool that you use to actually browse the uh, files that are on your hard drive. In this case, that is the E drive, which is basically the uh, temporary RAM drive that's using to store all of these uh, files for the system to actually work. And as you're going to see later on in this video, when we shut off the computer, all of that is going to be wiped out of RAM, as you know, that is just how RAM behaves. Uh, it's only temporary storage, and you would have to go through that whole process you guys saw at the beginning of it actually extracting all of the files. But you also still have your other uh, drives over here, so we have A, C, and D. A is obviously the floppy diskette, so if I click on that, you're going to hear the uh, floppy drive. Um, we can actually browse uh, on my C drive, and this is actually an installation of Windows 98. Uh, so we can actually go in here, go into Windows, and you know, see all of your uh, files in there. Um, so yeah, this is, you know, I can browse, you can see it says right there, C Gateway, because I used a uh, Gateway Restore CD to actually restore this, uh, you know, computer back to Windows 98, uh, to its uh, factory settings, essentially. So yeah, you can actually go through here and browse all of your uh, files on the hard drive. So this is a, a very useful tool for, say, for example, if you couldn't boot up into Windows for whatever reason, but you still want to access some of your documents, well, this is one way to do that. You, you can actually load off of this and still, if your hard drive obviously hasn't become corrupted, you can still actually read the files off of it, but you just can't boot into Windows for whatever reason. Uh, this is one way you could actually browse uh, all the files on your hard drive. So I could go into my documents, my pictures, obviously I don't have anything in there, but if I did, I could access it. Obviously the control panel is where uh, you know, you're going to actually modify all of your settings, you can change things like the appearance, if we go into color here, they don't have any uh, additional color schemes, but they do have the color palette that you can use if you want to manually customize this. So if I want to make the background black, if I want the inactive title bar text to be blue, if I want the active to be red, and we can make the background of the inactive title bar maybe this greenish color. So you can really customize this. I mean, this is just a uh, standard Windows 3.1 stuff. There's nothing really special here. This floppy diskette does actually have a feature where if we actually go to end our Windows session here, so we're going to uh, hit OK, when it actually closes out of it, it will ask you, um, once it actually loads up here, if you want to save the system settings to the disk, we'll say yes. And now what it's going to do is actually save all of those uh, settings that I just modified. So in this case, those were the uh, appearance settings in the color menu under control panel. And when we actually load back off of it, it will ask us if you want to load the custom settings. And if you press yes, well, then it's going to actually load all of those settings up. And you're going to see that uh, once I actually, you know, reboot it here. So you can see that now it has actually removed uh, mini windows from memory and uh, now you actually have a choice if you want to stay on DOS or if you want to restart or sh shut down or restart the system um, so we just uh, hit on shut down there and now it's actually shut down the system okay so right here is where it will ask you if you want to restore the saved system settings so we'll say yes and now it will actually restore those settings that I uh, you know modified in the last session. And so there you go, check that out. We have just reloaded back into Mini Windows 3.11, and you can see that my custom color palette is still applied, which is definitely very, very awesome. So yes, you can actually make uh, modifications to this OS uh, and actually shut it down. You just have to obviously choose the setting where it, you know, when it asks you, do you wanna save your uh, you know, settings that you made, you have to say yes. So obviously everything else in the control panel is going to allow you to change, you know, various settings on your system, fonts, ports, uh, you can change your mouse settings here. Uh, under desktop, there are no patterns and there are no wallpapers. Obviously this was done to save space, so you just basically have to choose from a solid color uh, for the desktop background, which you do in the color um, panel right here. So we can go to the color palette, let's say we want the background to be 
Uh, let's go with orange, why not? So there you go. So now, yeah, you basically have to choose from a solid color for the background. So yeah, you can basically change all of these settings in here. International settings, though, is one of the icons that it actually shows up in here, but it actually gives you an error um, opening it up, basically saying that it cannot... Uh, find the file that's looking for in the system directory which is probably you know because it was cut from the system so it actually says right here to copy the original files on disk one which would be set up disk one to your system directory which in this case we don't have because it is a uh you know entire like the, the whole os is contained on this floppy disk uh, so that is the control panel uh dos prompt obviously will open up an ms dos prompt but not really anything special there uh pif editor allows you to edit uh, program information file so uh, there you go and that is where you would actually do that again this is a, a standard tool that comes with Windows 3.1 uh, multipad is actually a Microsoft program if you go to about multipad you can see that it says Microsoft Windows multipad version 3 this is basically this is actually pretty cool it is a version of notepad that can actually have multiple windows open in it very similar to how the program manager contains all of these uh, program group windows well multipad is basically the same way but for no Notepad windows, so it actually acts as basically a program manager for Notepad windows. So that is uh, that is basically that. So you can actually have multiple text documents in here at the same time. So definitely pretty neat. Uh, clipboard is obviously your clipboard viewer. Pretty self-explanatory. Clock is well the clock again. Pretty self-explanatory. We can actually shrink this down and maybe you know have it be in the corner of your uh, system if you want. So you can kind of have this right here so you can see what time and date it is, make it maybe a little larger. And calculator is obviously your standard version of calculator. Nothing really special here. And another thing that's worth noting is you can actually, if you really want to, since uh, this system here is actually running off of uh, the system's RAM, you can actually remove the floppy diskette from the drive and still use the system uh, just like you normally would. But when you actually go to shut down the system, this is where uh, you might actually see some things break because at this point it's actually trying to load some data off of this diskette where it kind of you know tells you that it's wiping data from the RAM and then it actually asks you, okay, what do you want to do? Do you want to load into DOS or do you want to shut down or restart the system? But we can actually put this uh, floppy diskette back into the drive and uh, you know load off of it. You can press enter there and that will, that will actually allow us to you know, go through that whole uh, ending process here where it says, okay, do you want to save system settings? We'll say yes. But obviously this is very useful because if you wanted to load into this uh, miniaturized version of Windows 3.1 and then take the floppy drive out and put another floppy drive into it, so say that you wanted to like browse some files, maybe you had some programs that you, that you wanted to run off of that floppy diskette, well, you could do that. So there you have it guys, that is a look at uh, the mini Windows 3.11 floppy diskette by the China DOS Union. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this one, if you did, definitely be sure to to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever that I upload a new video, which I do every single week on this channel. And uh, if you guys uh, have any questions or comments for me, be sure to leave those down below as I always enjoy reading what you guys have to say. And as always, I just want to thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.